mom is called Poppy and she's about three and a half years old. And this is her third litter. And this is a tiny litter of three. One girl and two boys. And she's obviously a Springer Spaniel. Yes, and she's and a purebred Springer Spaniel. She's docked and do clawed because she's working lines. And she, those kind of dogs are usually quite lively dogs and quite and can be quite tricky as pets, can't they? But you've, I think you've told me before that she's a very calm dog for the yeah. breed. Yeah, she is. That's why I breed from them because both Poppy and Dylan, who's the dad, they're just so calm. Their nature is so calm, Poppy and Dylan, that they're fantastic pets. Tell me about uh, the pregnancy first. Right. How long is a Springer Spaniel pregnant for? All dogs are pregnant for uh, average 63 days. When they come into season, when they're bleeding red, they're not fertile. It's when the red turns to a straw color, then they're fertile. Um, so you've got about a four day window. So you're, the best thing is to breed on day one and then to breed two days after that. Because I have mom and the stud dog, Dylan, I just leave them to it and let them breed all the time. <laughs> but if you had to go and use an outside stud dog, you'd have to probably schedule in two visits. How was the pregnancy? How did it go? It's fine, yeah. She's, she's no problem at all. All that I do when they're pregnant is on day 40, I switch her onto puppy food. So I feed her high quality puppy food and I worm her every day. So I put a liquid wormer in the food every day from day 40. So she doesn't have any why, worm. And why is that? Why would you So it keeps that? her worm free, which she should have been anyway, because my dogs are regularly wormed. But then that passes on to the pups, so then they don't have any worms. Not, again, that they would, but it's just a precaution. The puppy food, I give mom the puppy food because that's really high um, energy and protein and uh, vitamins, minerals and all that. So I just give her that. I had her scanned. I don't normally have them scanned because I can normally tell, but I just had her scanned for my own peace of mind because I can have false pregnancies. So I wanted to make sure she wasn't in a false pregnancy. And then about a week before she's due, we bring the whelping box into the kitchen, get that set up. And she just knows it's strange. Within days of it being there, she'll start going into it more and staying in it more. And she's just so used to it now and such a good mom that she just goes in the whelping box and gives birth. And that's it. And when the day finally came, what, what actually happened? What, you, you just get, she, she starts to act in a certain way. And we should say this is three days ago from, from when we were recording this, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So Sunday night, I thought she was probably getting ready. She starts panting a bit, a bit anxious, a bit attached to me. Um, went to bed, no problem. Thought I heard her about three in the morning kind of scratching at the bedding, which is um, normal, um, like nesting, you'd call it. Popped downstairs, nothing, so I went back to bed. Um, next morning, she had actually um, had an accident in the house. She'd weed and kind of pooed everywhere, and that was pretty much my sign, because then she's just ready. Um, and just was in the kitchen with all of us before the, my boys went off to school, and she just delivered first puppy, no problem. Didn't need to be quiet. Every, you know, everyone was there. She just went in the welcoming box, delivered, just got on with it. Because she's happy, you know, and she's secure in the house, so she's not worried about it. I just stand back and I just make sure she delivers it. It's come out fine. I had a quick look, didn't touch it. So it comes out, it's in a sack. They lick the sack. And it can, it can look quite kind of violent if you're not used to seeing it, because they will actually put the puppy in their mouth. She puts the puppy in her mouth, breaks the sack, and that's when she eats that. And then she just licks it until it kind of starts moving itself. Um, and then she chews through the cord. Then after that's born, the placenta comes out. After the puppy's born, the placenta comes out, she eats that. I mean, they come out and they immediately just know to go feed and they start feeding. She delivered the next one two hours later. And then another two hours, she had another one. And then I thought she'd have more because her last litter was eight. Uh, waited, nothing, rang the vet to just say she'd had three. So I don't see any more. So the vet said, well, are you happy with that? Or do you want to, want to bring her in? Because you would expect more. But you just, you know your dogs, so you watch. And she was not stressy. She wasn't straining to deliver anymore. So we just left her and she's just stopped at three. How has she been in the first three days? 
she's, well, and, and how have the pups been in the first three days as well? Yeah, uh, she's been fine. She uh, is very comfortable in the house and very comfortable with all of us around. So she is fine with us handling the pups. Doesn't stress her out at all. Dad, we tend to isolate for about 24 hours, but she's even happy with him now in the room, which is incredibly unusual. Most you bitches, normally keep yeah, you normally keep separate. I mean, most bitches would attack any anybody that was around their puppies, but it just goes to show how good her temperament is. And and Dad's just fine. You know, he's not bothered. And are they starting to grow already? Because it's yeah. only three days, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So we're day three. Yeah, they are growing. They grow every day. I don't bother weighing them. I did when I first started breeding dogs, but I can tell just by looking. If they're eating, they'll be fine. Um, they get very big bellies. You can see when, when their bellies are full of milk. Um, and you can hear them eating, so you know that they are eating. Um, you'd have a, you would have a problem by day three if there was anything not right with them. And you mentioned uh, earlier about the vet uh, docking them, docking mm. their tails mm. and uh, removing the dew claws. You can deal with the docking first. We talk about the UK here, there are mm. sort of rules and guidelines on that because um, th you can't just dock any dog, can you, the, these days. Well, first of all, why is it done and, w and what are the kind of conditions when that is allowed? Uh, it's, there is a lot of um, misunderstanding about the law. A lot of people think it's illegal. It's not illegal. They need to be working type dogs, which Springers are. Uh, there's a few things you can meet, uh, criteria, sometimes you have to meet, you might be asked for a shotgun license. You might be trialing, a trialing person, in which case you, probably, you might not have a shotgun license. They might be going for police work, which they need to be docked as well. Um, in general, I dock them because I live on a, a, at a country estate. For me, it's just better. And the danger is, if the, if the tails are left and they are a working dog, what, yeah. what problems can that lead to? Well, the thing with Springers is they are just known for, they'll go through anything. They'll go through the hedges, they'll go through um, bracken, bramble, everything. And their tails will get caught in those things. And the, the ends of their tails are quite thin. The danger is they split the tail. And if the tail splits, then you have a big problem because then it's actually an operation. So if they're nine, ten months or a year or two years and that happens, they then have to get the tail amputated, which is, you know, full general anesthetic put to sleep. And then you have the problem of trying to keep... A, an open wound still to heal, and it's a dog's tail, so that's really hard to do. So the vet will come tomorrow to, yeah, to the, dock the tails? Yeah, I mean, the vet comes to me, you can take them to the vet. I prefer the vet to come here. I'm always slightly wary of taking newborn puppies into a vet's waiting room, because you don't know what the other dogs in there would have had. I've never had a problem, but just in case. And I don't really like to separate them from mom. And that's a fairly straightforward operation. That's quick and, and it easy. It takes it? literally two minutes. I couldn't believe it when I first saw it. I mean, it's almost like nail scissors. Comes, comes here, looks them over, and then just takes off the ends of their tails, puts some iodine on them, and that's it. The dew claws are just annoying. Um, it's an extra nail, really, on their, on their poles. Um, and, and many dogs gets, have yeah, those. Yeah, all, I think all dogs have them. I actually don't know if that's a working dog thing or just some people generally do that because it just catches on things. And it's one of those annoying, it's, it's a tiny injury, but there's a lot of blood with it. So it's easy to just take it off. Um, and that again is just literally cutting the nail off and then it doesn't grow. Um, and then the vet gives me a docking certificate saying I've met the criteria and he's happy to dock their tails and he signs that. And that document then is also used for their microchip, because in the UK, you, all puppies have to be microchipped before you can sell them. So the puppies are microchipped uh, in my name as the breeder, uh, and that's all on. So the docking certificates, the docking and the microchip number. And then when they go to their new homes, they take all that with them. Well, it's great that you're letting us follow them. We'll be back uh, in another week to uh, do some more filming with them and then have a catch up. And to, just to kind of look forward, are you expecting fairly significant changes in the puppies in, in kind of just one week's time? Yeah, they'll be a lot bigger. Um, the big change will come in about two and a half weeks, three weeks, when their ears and their eyes open. Then they become puppies, you know, then they're... Then you've got trouble. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then they're all over the place. Um, so that's really when the fun, fun starts. And then they really develop their personalities. Well, it's great, great to see them, them now, and th thank you for letting us thank uh, you. have a look in the puppy pen. Thank you.